Setting foot in this place is not without its perils. In winter, ice can make the aisles between the sharp concrete blocks slippery, even more so because the paths go up and down. But this wasn't intended as a space for visitors to find balance. Here, they're supposed to be challenged. This location is a memorial, one which was only completed after 17 years of discussion in Germany. The Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe is dedicated to the victims of the Nazi Holocaust. Many attempts have been made to interpret the design. Some say the slabs recall Jewish gravestones and that the color gray symbolizes the ashes of Jews whose bodies were burned by the Nazis. But architect Peter Eisenman refuses to offer any interpretation. He describes the memorial as a place of no meaning. To me, I've never been in a, in a place like this, in a space like this. That's what's important because there was nothing really like the Holocaust, so there's nothing really like this. If there's any relationship between the Holocaust and this, it's that. Eisenman has said he wants visitors to experience the monument in their own way, by walking through it and by climbing on top of it. And many people do just that. But visitors are not left entirely to their own devices. Two security guards make sure visitors do not climb on the slabs. Unfortunately, the goal that Peter Eisenman had in mind was for everything here to be open. He had no objection to people jumping on the stones or running around. But that's not what the people in charge of the memorial want. And I don't think it would be in the interest of survivors or the people who lived through that era. For them, it's an insult. And that's what many people have told us. Hardly any other architectural creation in Germany is subject to as much interpretation and emotion as this spot. Even though, or perhaps precisely because, on the surface at least, Eisenman shunned symbolism, the site remains a place of confrontation. Some people complain that it's too quiet, but others say they'd like it to be quieter. Others don't agree that people should be allowed to sit down here. They think that's highly disrespectful. Others ask, why shouldn't they be able to sunbathe here? People are all different. That's not going to change. But once visitors immerse themselves in this windowless world of concrete, most find it hard not to be affected by the disturbing atmosphere. Although the horizon is always in sight, it appears beyond reach. The snaking paths lead visitors further into the maze. It's disorienting. You can hear people speaking, but you can't see them. When you walk between the slabs in the middle, you get a haunting feeling that you're in a labyrinth and you don't know what's going to come at you from right or left. You don't hear the noise of the big city. People disappear around the corner and you never see them again. Or they walk by you at the next intersection. You never quite know what's happening around you. Most visitors are relieved to find their way out and leave the Holocaust monument behind them. That may be just the response the architect was aiming for.